Welcome to part two of the OM648 E320 CDI glow plug system overview. In the last video, we went over uh, general troubleshooting tips for the pre-glow system, as well as some of the uh, quirks with parts, such as uh, the brew plugs versus the Bosch plugs. Newsflash, Bosch plugs, bad. We talked a little bit about the pre-glow controller itself and how that communicates with the ECU, but in this video, we're actually gonna be showing how to remove the glow plugs safely without risk of breakage. Uh, there's two different methods, as I mentioned in the last video. I'm only gonna be showing one of them in this video because it is the most effective. Now, the first method of doing this is uh, to actually set a torque wrench, preferably a small torque wrench, quarter inch drive, to the glow plug, set it to a predefined value, which is technically set before the breaking point of the uh, glow plug. I don't know what that breaking point is. I've never actually used this method, but it's been talked about several times by, uh, by dealership techs and, and whatnot in order to prevent the glow plug from snapping when just using traditional torque. Now the second method, which is my favorite and the only method I've ever used, and it's worked flawlessly 100% of the time, is to use a quarter inch drive electric impact. These babies right here. This generates low torque, but relatively high uh, impact frequency. And that combination of things uh, does not generate enough torque in order to snap the glow plug off, but it actually works very, very well. The, uh, the high frequency repeated hammering is really, really, really good for getting these glow plugs out. Now the next step is very important and uh, it's critical that you probably do it the night before you actually plan on pulling the plugs out. And that is to spray all of the holes where the glow plugs are in with penetrant. Now I use this penetrant, uh, it was recommended by, there's actually a channel on YouTube called Project Farm and he tested a bunch of the popular uh, penetrant lubricants like this and this uh, Seafoam Deep Creep came out on top. So shout out to that, uh, that channel, I'll link it in the description below if you want to check it out. This stuff works fantastic, uh, better than PB Blaster and there's another one called uh, Blue Creeper out there for professionals and I think this actually works better than that. So you're actually going to take your penetrant and you're going to spray right down there around around the glow plug in that bore where it sits and every single one of the glow plugs that you're going to remove. The next step is to actually remove these black electrical connectors right there that goes onto the top of the plug. To do that you're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers like this. Don't probably have to be this long and the tip also doesn't have to be bent uh, but this is the tool I found works the best. You're going to come down here Grab a hold of the side of the plug. Excuse me, I'm using one hand, so. <laughs> but grab a hold of the plug and make sure not to squeeze too hard, uh, especially in southern climates, these plastic connectors can get very brittle. Grip it just enough so the plastic won't slide out and then kind of wiggle it up and down until it comes out. There we go, got it. Should snap right off. The next step is the impact to pull it out. As I showed earlier, the best thing for getting these things out is one of these quarter inch drive electric impacts. I've got a 10 millimeter quarter drive deep well socket on here. That is the ticket for fitting this tool in there. All right, a little bit of impact and that glow plug pulled right out of there, no problem. What I'll do is I'll let it kind of, once it pulls all the way out of the threads, I'll just let the impact free spin and, uh, and spin that glow plug around in there. It helps remount the hole a little bit and free the glow plug from the carbon so it can be pulled straight out just like that. Some of them are a little harder to reach. Uh, they're a little deeper, such as uh, like cylinder number one plug here. So you want to put a little bit of an extension on as short of an extension as possible in order to get enough torque transfer to the socket. That one came out quite easily as well. Uh, and I think the trick to these guys was uh, number one, the penetrant, and number two, the, the impact. Uh, really made these things come out. I have not had these plugs out of here. They, I haven't pulled them before the video or anything. Uh, they came out as they've been in there for the last God knows how many miles. Now I know if some of these plugs are not seated correctly uh, previously, you will get some, uh, some coking, some, some carbon that comes up underneath the seat of the glow plug and forms around the glow plug. That's what makes them harder to get out. Doesn't look like I had that issue on this particular engine, uh, but I have had it on, on my car. This is actually not my car, this is a customer's car. And uh, on my car, I did have some coking on a couple of glow plugs. I ended up changing all six. 
and the impact worked great for that as well. And what I'll actually do uh, to get rid of some of that coking is I'll take one of the old glow plugs and I'll soak it in uh, a product called Fluid Film. Uh, it's it's lanolin based. It's a great cleaner, but it's also kind of a good. Um, uh, it's a sticky substance. So when it cleans that carbon away, it all adheres to the plug. And then I, I run it, I use the impact and I run it up and down and up and down through the threads. And it, it cleans a lot of that carbon out even down by the tip of the plug. So I'll do that a few times and then I'll stick to get all that, all that crap out of there, all that uh, fluid film out of there. I'll run a rag down there with some brake clean all the way in as far as I can get it a couple times to clean that out. This one looks fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dry uh, and clean with some brake clean both of those bores, uh, clean them out a little bit, and then put the new plugs in. Now that those bores are cleaned out, we're ready to put the glow plug back in. What I recommend doing is rubbing a little bit of anti-seize on the threads here. Uh, if you've had some coking issues, you can, uh, you can put the anti-seize a little bit further down on the body, but do not go beyond where the step down is here. This part down here is the actual electrode. It's the part of the glow plug that actually glows. And if you get anything on here, uh, any type of contaminant, especially something that's designed to stay and stick, uh, it can prematurely burn out the glow plug tip. Just like a light bulb, you don't want any contaminants on it. You don't want any oils on it or anything like that. So be careful not to touch that either. I'll run it down basically finger tight with the impact and then finish up with a ratchet. I use a ratchet for the uh, finishing process of tightening down the glow plugs. Uh, I recommend using a quarter inch drive ratchet. These things actually don't need to be torqued down super tight. They just need to be able to seat correctly. So a quarter inch drive ratchet I think is, uh, is perfect for seating these things. Now we can put these electrical connectors back on and the job will be done. You want to push down until you feel or hear a snap, just like that. Cylinder number two is one of the easiest ones to get to. You can seat this one with your finger. Once those connectors are back on, your glow plug system is good to go as long as all the issue that you had was a burned out glow plug. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, keep an eye out for more uploads. I upload regularly. Uh, I maintain five, now six vehicles on a regular basis, uh, all Mercedes, five of them diesels. Uh, and so I've got a lot of content.